here from PA Brew News. I don't know if I want you here or here. I don't know what I want. I don't know if I want you here or 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 here. But here we go. Uh, yeah, just a uh, home. Mm, good to the beard. Getting the beard going. Um, do 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 do. Out here in the morning mist. The mist of the morning. Gonna do a beer review here. Uh, not a beer review. Uh, yes, I guess a beer review. A side by side beer review. A comparison beer review. Uh, a double box showdown of a sorts. There too. They're both my, you know, in the in the top tier echelon for me of double box. So I was like, you know what? They're both aged. Let's just put them together. Let's just put them together and rock and roll and just do a side by side German double box seller review goodness at the parents' house in the morning mists rolling in. And of course, uh, it was a little bit more misty and cool and ethereal out here, but now, you know, while I've been screwing around and getting everything up, the sun has come up. And now it's all like, uh, but still fine, still good. Okay, two different glasses, but they're still the same kind of glass, I guess you could say, because uh, my parents are not, uh, they're not stocked up with glassware like I am. So this is, you know, my normal whatever here when I, and this is actually, I think, see the R there? I want to say that this was from my wedding. I do believe. And you know how that turned out. Not as well as I was hoping, let's just say that. Anyway, we have two beers right here. We have two beers right here. This one actually is an anniversary edition, which is cool. This is the Schneider Weisse. The Schneider Weisse, 110th anniversary because they were started, and this was in, um, uh, this was brewed in 2017. Uh, 2017, they, they, they had their, their um, 110th anniversary, so that's pretty cool. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, and that's the uh, anniversary. No, no, and the Aventinus anniversary. I'm sorry. This is the Aventinus, of course, I'm drinking here. And this is the 110th year of brewing this specific beer. Schneiderweisse was started in, uh, in Bavaria and in uh, do, 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 1875, I think it was, 1875. Schneider was was started, and they boo -doo, boo boo, and then they're from Kelmheim, 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 is it Kelm? Go Kelheim, so home of Kel. Whoever Kel is, it's it's home. Heim is home. Kelheim, the home of Kel, and that's where Schneider Weisse is brewed out of. The uh, uh, Schneider Weisse is a brothers co. I'm not sure if it's called or sons. Schneider Weisse and Shun, sons, but. Um, this is a wheat based double box so I know everyone's gonna be bitching because this is a wheat based double cup box and the other one isn't so they might be different blah 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 I still think they're fantastic if you know what I mean so and wheat box are nice too wheat double box are nice so um, can be cellared for later enjoyment obviously well, that's nice and this one is coming in uh, again this is from 2017 this is coming in at 8.2 alcohol by the volume so that's the first one and the second one here is I think one of my favorite if not my favorite is Weinheim Stefana's Dunkle Stachbier this is the Corbinian double bock and they are from Feising Germany and they have been brewing since 1040 which is you know this is wow and the, I mean it makes 1875 seem like a new brewery. You know what I mean? So this is, they've been brewing from since 1040. Of course, brewed in the same thing, the German Reichsgebot, the Germany Purity Laws uh, of 1516. This is a 7.4 alcohol by the volume. And I'm not sure about the date code. I know this is super aged, but there is a date code on the back, I do believe. So this might be from December 26, 2018, uh, 2008. If it is, great. If it's not, I think it'll still taste absolutely bitch tits. Oh, so there we go. Uh, www.weinheinstefana.de. So, let's see. 
Uh, oh yeah. And it was a bottle and brewed by the Brauerei Straats Brauerei uh, from Weinheim Stefan, Freising, Germany. Because if there's an inner at the end of it, it's usually that's from that's where they're from. Weinheim Stefan, Germany. Er, Weinheim Stefan. Er, if you know what I mean. The beer of the place. So anyway, I guess we're just gonna get these things cracked open, and hopefully I'm streaming. So there you go. And if I'm not, I'll. Find out later. So a little crack this one open. We're just gonna throw this one into the no necker. Let that do its thing. Carbonation, the whole deal. Kind of a caramel, soft caramel hue to this one. Coming up, lots of bubbles on a very well unclean glass. Big carbonation. All right, now this one. Sboop. Sboop. Okay, here comes the Corbinian. Can of smoke rolling up. A little bit darker than the other one, but like, again, nice toasted burnt caramels. I'd say this one definitely is a little bit darker than the Aventinas, just right off the, right off the bat, right off the get-go. So, itch my head, itch my head, itch my head, itch my head, itch my head. Now, I don't know if you can see the comparison, but there is the two different beers. Ooh, that's good. There was a moment there where you, you put it up the light, it actually shows you the difference. But there they are. And if you can see, I mean, like, they are very, 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 very similar. But this one actually has retained a head, which this one, it's kind of puffed, puffed away. You can actually see this through this one, though, especially up to the light. Very clear. Caramel hit, hit a ruby. This one, a little bit more murkiness. Still caramel, ruby. There's a little bit of a murky tonality. Not murky, uh, it's just a little bit darker. You know, this one you can really clearly see through. This one has more of the kind of shadows and stuff lingering in, mixing in with that. But there you go, so the Aventinas and the Corbinian. So here we go. Let's get an aroma on this one. Cheers. Oh, plum. Like plums, raisins, brown sugar, caramel, toffee. That ethanol alcohol is wafting you in the face too from that 8.2%. But it's bringing tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of dark fruit. Dark fruit. So this is from 2017. The plumminess is just crazy. Yeah, tons of plum, treacle, brown sugar, raisins, dates, dark fruit chaos too. I understand there's a big um, there's a big campfire right here, so I'm getting smoky tones, but I'm already you know, already understand what that's coming from. So it, this is roasty, toasty, caramel, burnt goodness. It's very it's a very hearty smell too, so it's very easy to differentiate what you're smelling from the outside aromas and stuff. It's very very bombastically goodness. So here is the Corbinian. Let's give this one a little bit of a sniffer. Not as bombastic in those dark fruits and ethanol alcohols. But just nice, just roasty caramel, brown sugar tonalities, a little bit of raisin in there too. I like the fact that I'm getting baker's chocolate out of this one. It's got that kind of darker tonality to it. Mm, really good stuff. I mean, both of these are quality. So don't ever think because I favor one of the over by the end of this or whatever, they're both quality. So let's get into the 2017 Aventinas. Let's get a sip of the more bombastically dark fruited aroma one with showing his alcohol, but yet a little bit on the lighter side. So cheers. A bit thin it's a bit thin it's easy drinking it's crazy um, nice little bit of oiliness to it don't get me wrong um, it just does, it doesn't have that kind of creaminess you know that kind of savoriness that you want from a big disgusting double bock you know but at the same time it's got, it's got this nice 
that wheat kind of tone, ghee, is, is kind of playing along in there nicely. You have a little bit of that kind of drying capabilities of that kind of earthiness, a little bit of a roasted, toasted brown bread, little, little uh, copper coin tones. Nice little raisin quality still from all that dark fruit still wafting around your palate. And even though it gave you the 8.2 ethanol alcohol in the nose, it's not really translating to the taste. It's really easy drinking, really crushable. You could really put this side by side with a lot of Christmas ales or winter warmers because it has that extreme beautiful dark fruit tonality that a lot of those do have too. And this is, of course, a beautiful beer to be drinking in the winter time, in the colder moments, you know what I mean? But I, you know, crack open a case of these in, in June and just get obliterated, you know, so whatever. Okay, so that's the first one of that. I like to get the, the beer review kind of comparison out of the way. If I do want to drink these beers and, and shoot the shit later, I want to get this out of the way. So people aren't going, well, what do you think? What do you think? And you know, I forget half the time, you know. So, Corbinian, cheers. Mouthfeel is king on this one. Oh, there's a, a beautiful creamy pillowiness to this one. Oh, hangs around for a little bit too. Muted, muted burnt sugars, caramel. It's these burnt caramels that are combining beautifully with a baker's chocolate too. It just gives you that little extra layer of savoriness. Tootsie Roll qualities in there. I know like some people don't like being compared with, you know, candies and stuff, but you know, people understand those kind of things. So why not put them into your beer reviews? Tootsie Roll, kind of that, those, ton those tonalities, little subtle hints of that. You still get a little bit of a brown sugar tonality. You still get a little bit of raisin, but this is more brown sugar, uh, just treacle, molasses kind of qualities. I think that is a little bit higher in this one than this one. The dark fruit is definitely a king in this one. So, but this is just roasted, toasted. Tonalities of a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of a pepperiness. You have those copper coin tones, but then you have these beautiful sugars, burnt sugars. You have that baker's chocolate that's kind of wafting around everything. Oh, oh boy. And definitely, if you guys have a favorite double bock, throw it in the comments. And what you like about your double bock, or what you expect in your double bock, or what makes you, you know, go to double box, throw that in, or what you don't like about double box, throw that in the comments too. And the sun, oh, the sun. I wish this did have a little bit more kicked up tonality of that dark fruit. I would like a little bit more of something in this beer to really take it over the edge of just mind boggling. Um, I don't know if a little bit of honey or something like that would, well you can't do that because it's, it's a German impurity law so just don't even listen to what I just said. But if there was something in there that could bump up a little bit of the I actually, I don't know, this sounds a little bit weird, but more, a little, just a little bit more sweetness in there, a little bit more caramel sweetness, savoriness, and a touch more of a dark fruit component. And this thing is, would be an epic, just, you know, that uh, Indiana Jones where the ball goes and the, like the other beers would be running in front of it and it would just be crushing them because that's, they would just be that good. Hmm. Really nice. Okay, let me go back to this now that I have a good idea of both of them. But this does have a nice oiliness to it, but the overall body's a bit thinner. It is a bit thinner. 
this one has this one has the hint of a caramel sweetness and it has that dark fruit that I want out of the other one this one doesn't have those nice brown sugar uh, or, or baker's chocolate burnt caramels that kind of give it that extra component of savoriness and the mouthfeel that that one has if you see what I'm saying there they, they are very similar um, but they mirror they they kind of contrast each other on what I miss about what I want in both of those that one has what I want that I wish it with this hat and this has what I wish that hat it's kind of weird kind of weird this is a nice beer though nice big double block cellar temp As the morning fog burns off, you know, that kind of thing. And it does have, it does, it has that kind of lighter, lighter sugars, lighter caramel sweetnesses that is coming out nice. You know what I mean? It's very vibrant. It's light. It's easy to drink. It hides the ABV in the taste amazingly well, especially with the age, of course, that's on it. It has uh, kind of acclimated its own ABV, so I'm sure... I do remember that some of the ones that I had that were more fresh had a little bit more of a ugh, you know, because the 8.2, it's a traditional beer, they don't hide their ABV as well. But this one, it just is more, it's just more broody, you know what I mean, savory and broody, uh, kind of calm down and darker. Mm. And it's kind of, that kind of Tootsie Roll kind of vibe that is coming, coming, coming through there in the back end all that baker's chocolate the mouthfeel it's just really really fucking good it is really good it's hard to compare like as i said it's hard to compare these two for me as far as like what i want what i like the best because this is lacking in mouthfeel body and is lacking a little bit in those more richer components as far as the the darker malt bases this one is excuse me is lacking in a little bit of those dark fruit qualities and those little bit of a nice bright sweetnesses that play against those nice broody qualities you know what i mean that this one has so it's kind of like a balancing act but Yeah, I think I would have to say, as a whole right now, because they're, no, they're not, they're, they're upper echelon. I mean, they're just top of their class, kind of upper echelon. They know what they're doing and a lot of beers act, you know, like kind of emulate what they've already done. So <clears throat> they are trendsetters and you know what I mean? They already, they already set the poles. I would say that I would give the Corbinian from Weinhein Stefaner a 9.5 because it's just for me personally that's it's it's got the body it's got that savory quality that broodiness it has that kind of look at me I'm a big double bock even though it doesn't show either one of these shows the ABV just adds to that kind of occasion that sense of occasion that you're just sipping on a big double buck cold stormy night that kind of deal movie you could just relax bug in the eye those kind of things the Aventinus I would give a 9 to still fantastic just lacking a little bit of those savory qualities lacking a little bit of that body it's very light and surprisingly light easy drinking uh, big big dark fruit qualities especially with the three years of age on it but it's just it just seems like you're just drinking more of just like a light sessionable winter warmer kind of a deal or that's you know those kind of Christmas ales and you know it's just like yeah I'm just gonna pound it back pound it back I mean it will it will fuck you up you know <laughs> it's one of those beers that you it's so easy drinking that it's also very very dangerous dangerous beer but yeah 
I think as it stands right now, the, the Corbinian from Weinhecht Stefana is definitely going to be the victor for this double box showdown for me today. I just, I just think that's, that's where it stands for me. Now, now comes the time where I cuvee. I'm going to put them together and see what I do, see what I like. Trying to 50 50 it as much as humanly possible. 50 50. Like that, throw that. The Kobe! Is that the Kobe? So here we go. 50 50. Here we go. Yeah, already it's got that kind of. Uh, Baker's chocolate, darker, broody stuff, but then those 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 nice uh, f uh, dark fruits are kind of shining through now more. That's exactly what it should be. So cheers. Mm. Uh, a lot of a lot of brightness now. The brightness is acclimated. This is kind of like showing up more because it's the different styles brown breads and those kind of weed tones are kind of compiling there in the middle and around that then you start getting more of those burnt sugars those those brown bread tonalities a little bit of the copper coin tonalities those earthinesses but then like I said a little bit more of those uh, brown sugars a little bit more of those it's kind of slightly sweet caramels and those and then of course after that then you start getting those tonalities of the burnt caramels those burnt sugars then the treacle molasses kind of deal happens that's nice Mm. You're getting, you're getting that beautiful blend of rich, dark chocolate, that dark chocolate, that baker's chocolate in the darkness, mixing with that nice, soft plum date raisin. Ah, that's what it is. This is better. Mm. Oh man, I don't, with their powers combined, they are Captain Doublebock. Um, I don't know, I really don't know too many beers, uh, other Doublebocks that I've had that could compare to these bad boys put together because they are kind of acclimating each other very, very well and filling each other's blanks in very, very well. Wow, that's really nice. Damn. The Aventinus, of course, thins it out a little bit, so it could be bigger body, a little rich, richer, bigger body. It's not, and it's not. None of this is sticky, hard to drink. You know what I mean? Even if this body was a bit bigger, the sweetness is never overblown, and the body's never like you know richly sickly sweet or anything like that. So it's still, even if it was a thicker body, it would still be very sessionable and uh, approachable, which is nice. Um, yeah, I don't do quarters, but I wouldn't I wouldn't throw this up into the tens, but I would say it's 9.75. I'm going to give it that quarter that I usually don't give because, you know, this kicked up with those dark fruits is definitely the, the Kuvi is the winner of the showdown, <laughs> which, you know, I think some people already kind of expected, expected that to happen. So suspected that to happen. Um, yeah, good times. Tasty stuff. Hmm. Throw that there. Now I'm just gonna top it up. Top, top, top. Top, top, top. There it is. It has been topped. So, yeah. Put that there out of the way. Put that there. Just trying to situate. Oh! I tried to put the cap on and it just flew. It, it really flew. That was pretty good. So, this has been Paul Pay Brew News. Uh, well, there you go. I don't. I don't know what else to say. Yep. I would say nine five for the Corbinian. I'm gonna give nine right now to the Aventinus from Schneiderweiser, 
And then together, I'm actually going to throw them up to the 9.75 category because, you know, these two little monsters put together, it makes a, a very nice beast. And, uh, you know, if you have a thoughts, opinions, your favorite double buck, you know, what do you like about the style? What do you expect from the style? Blah, blah, blah. If you don't like the style, blah, blah, blah. Remember, they are loggers. So if you ever hear anyone that says they don't like loggers, but they, they like Baltic Porters and double box, well, then they're full of shit. So anyway, this is Paul Fabrinus. Cheers.